Hi beautiful people, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jackie and in today's video, I am going to talk about some tips and tricks on how to pass the MBLEX test because I recently passed the MBLEX test and it was around a couple weeks ago and I was so excited and so happy. And so I have a vlog right over here of basically that whole day of taking the test and just feeling very excited and very relieved that I finally passed this test. Again, if you are new to this channel, I am now a licensed massage therapist and I've been one for about almost three years. And this channel is all about my career as a massage therapist, massage therapy school, and really how to become a massage therapist and why it's such a great career for a work balanced lifestyle. So if you're interested in that, go ahead and subscribe. And yeah, it's gonna be a really informative video because I'm going to talk about how long it took me to prepare for the test Test, what resources I used to study for the test, test tips that helped me actually pass the MBLEX, and basically my whole experience taking this test, you know, what was the day like, what was the whole experience going into the Pearson Test Review Center, and how I felt afterwards, and everything in between. So if you're interested in that, go ahead and keep watching this video, and let's go ahead and get started. So just a disclaimer that if you live in California, you do not need to take the MBLEX test. And this is only for me because, you know, the future is uncertain and I might be moving, who knows? But just to be safe and just in case, I went ahead and took the MBLEX test because most states in the US require you to take this test in order to have a job. So that's why I took this test and kind of just to get it out of the way. You know, but again, if you're in California, no need to take this test. Great for us Californians who plan on staying here and living here forever. You know, you are completely like, I think you're exempt from taking the test. So that is great news. But if you are planning to move, I recommend, you know, trying to see when you're going to move and planning your test around that and seeing like if you have to take it or not. So just do that research. Okay, so first off, the first point is how long it took me to study for the MBLEX. It took me six months and I was pretty nervous because I had graduated massage therapy school in 2021. And I feel like all of the knowledge about anatomy, kinesiology, all of that really wasn't in like the forefront of my mind, you know? And so I, not that I forgot a lot of things, but I just, I needed to refresh my mind and I needed to like really study and uh, prepare myself for this test. So that's why it took me six months. And I used mblexguide.com. I also used the AMTA study prep app as well as the AMTA anatomy app. And those were pretty much the three only resources that I used. And let me tell you, you know, as someone who graduated you know, I guess like two-ish years ago, I think that those specific resources were amazing for me because the great thing about the MLEX Guide um, website is that they pretty much give you like in-depth lessons of what will be on the MBLEX test. So they have different topics from kinesiology, anatomy, um, business and ethics of massage therapy, professional law, massage techniques, everything. They have all the specific um, lessons that you need to know for the test. So that was great. And for me, I did the six month package. So that was $60. And I think that's a really great price for how much information was in that website. And pretty much it's a whole course. So $60 for that whole course. And for me to pass, that's amazing. So um, I went ahead and, you know, really like finished all the lessons in mblexguide.com. And then every single day I used the AMTA study prep app because in that app, it's basically just a whole bunch of multiple choice questions. Every single day they have like the questions of the day and then they have like, you know, different types of quizzes for you. Like for example, if your weakest subject is the ethics of massage therapy, they'll give you a whole bunch of questions on that. And so I highly recommend for you to download those two apps. They're both free as well. One thing that I did not do enough was actually watch YouTube videos. So if you scroll all throughout YouTube and you type in like 
MBLEX test guides or like MBLEX study prep or how to pass the MBLEX. You'll basically find a lot of people who take practice tests on YouTube and then they explain all the answers to you. Now, if you have extra time, you should definitely watch those YouTube videos because I didn't watch that and I wish I did because they really explain in depth all the answers that are right. And a lot of those answers are, they may be on the test, who knows? but it's so helpful. So, and again, let's go ahead and repeat the resources that you can use to pass this test. So first off, it is using the mlexguide.com, downloading the two apps, which is the AMTA study prep app, as well as the AMTA anatomy app, and then watching YouTube videos on MLEX tests and reviewing the answers for the test. And then also what I did was when I was studying, I had flashcards and I just basically wrote everything down on my flashcards and tested myself throughout the six months. All right, so now for some test tips for the MBLEX and test tips to help you with multiple choice because it is a multiple choice test. It is a hundred questions and they do give you two hours to complete this test. All right, so the first tip that I have is to really read the question carefully because what they like to do is trick you with the question. And if you're not reading carefully, you will get tricked and you might answer the wrong question. And I don't say this to scare you because honestly, in my opinion, the test wasn't too hard, but still there are some tricky questions on the test. So read the question carefully and really try to understand what they're trying to ask you. So for the next tip, it's all about the elimination process. So for multiple choice, you usually have around four answers and usually two of those answers will be completely wrong. You know, so as soon as possible, when you are carefully reading the question, eliminate the answers that you know are wrong. So that will usually be two of them. So quickly cross those out. So now you'll only have two questions that could possibly be right. So now you kind of have like a 50-50 chance of getting the right answer. So after you have those two answers, read the question again, read what they're trying to ask you and make an educated guess. And Again, I say educated because it has to be like, what makes the most sense? What answer makes the most sense for you, right? And once you make an educated guess, go with the best answer because sometimes what you think is right is actually right. So it's kind of like um, intuition, you know, like if you really think the answer is right, right, just go for it. Sometimes if we like second guess ourselves and if we're thinking, oh, maybe it could be this one, maybe it could be that, it ends up being the wrong answer, at least for me. So if you know that it's the right answer, just go ahead and select it instead of like second guessing yourself and wasting time. So let's summarize that. So first off, so read the question carefully and try to understand what they're asking you. Then you're gonna go ahead and eliminate the two answers that are probably incorrect. And then once you have the two answers that are possibly correct, go ahead and make an educated guess and really go with the best answer, go what you feel is correct and don't keep on second guessing yourself because then that could waste time and then also it could end up being the wrong answer. All right, the next tip is to take quizzes regularly. And you know, if I were you, I would take them almost every day, depending how close you are to the test. So like if it's like two months or one month before the test, I would recommend taking quizzes almost every single day if it's this month before the test, I would recommend taking a practice test like every single week just to make sure that like you're ready for this test, you're ready uh, for all the questions that may be on the test and yeah, take as many practice tests as possible and make sure that you at least pass five tests. So for me, um, you only need a 70% to pass. However, like I try to at least have like a 75 when I'm taking these practice tests. So start taking practice tests as soon as the test date is approaching. All right, so this next tip is actually very important. And my husband actually told me to not cram before the test because back then in my olden days when I was back in school and everything, sometimes I would cram for tests. And I was the type of student like, yes, I had good grades and I was in advanced classes, but I do not remember too much because I crammed a lot. And I studied so much like the day before and I would stay up until 3 a.m. And then that's just not good for the brain. If you're cramming all the knowledge in your brain, like sometimes your brain can't even process what you're studying the day before the test. 
So what I recommend is just really trust in yourself. And if you've studied, if you've taken six months, three months, whatever, like if you've had, if, if you've taken six months or even three months to study and you think you're ready and you feel ready, have that confidence in yourself that you're going to pass this test and like don't try to like cram all the things that you don't know under like one day i mean it's fine to study a little bit like you know the weekend before the test or whatever but just don't go hardcore and don't like make your brain too tired before the test you are more prepared than you think and also make sure to have a really good sleeping schedule like a week before the test and especially the day before the test, at least have seven to eight hours of sleep because then your brain will feel refreshed, you will feel alive, you'll feel happy, you'll feel ready for this test, confident and yeah, it'll just be a lot easier when you are well rested and you just feel healthy. And then of course, last but not least, have a really good breakfast. You wanna nourish the brain and a lot of us, we kind of like neglect our breakfast at times or sometimes we kind of don't really have the best diet and you know, food is medicine and food can really heal you and especially for your brain. If food is amazing for memory and feeling great, feeling healthy, all of that. So have a good breakfast before the test. Okay, all right, so last but not least, I'm gonna talk about my experience taking the test and what you can expect while taking the MLEX test as well. So my test was at 8 a.m. So I woke up around like six o'clock, had some breakfast, all of that got ready. And it took me 30 minutes to drive to the specific test center. So I would recommend getting there at least 30 minutes uh, before the test, just so that you can get yourself, you know, comfortable, sign in to the um, test center. They have to take your photo ID. They have to like register you into the system. They have to take a picture of you. So there's, so there's a lot of steps that you have to take before actually sitting down in front of a computer and taking the test. So get there early and be prepared, have your ID and a passport or at least two forms of ID with you. Wear something comfortable and you can't really bring anything inside the test center. So like they'll have you put everything in a locker before you sit down in front of a computer. So, you know, there's no use in bringing a water bottle. I mean, you can like, you can drink water beforehand, but you can't take anything with you into the testing room, um, just to let you know. And because they're very strict, they're very, very strict. Like you cannot cheat at all. If, if you cheat, like your license will be taken away. Everything will be taken away from you. So that's why like you can't really bring anything into the, the testing room. So yes, um, the test was in front of a computer and we had our own little like desks or our, our own little like office cubicles that we got to sit in so that like we didn't see anyone. So we were just covered up. There were, were walls in between us. So it was just us, a screen, and then we had like a little sheet of paper that we could write down, you know, like if we had to write down answers or whatever, brainstorming on the paper, we had that. So I basically, it took me around like an hour and a half to finish this test because they give you two hours. Yeah, but I took around like an hour and a half and I was getting really nervous by like the end because I thought that, I don't know, I just thought that I wasn't gonna finish in time. But don't be afraid to use all the time that you can because of course they do give you this time for a reason. And also two hours is a lot of time, especially for a hundred questions. Like you have enough time, so don't worry about it. Of course, don't be too slow in every single question, but you will have time. And especially on the questions that you already know, like right off the bat, just go ahead and answer it and go into the next one. Okay, so as far as the cost of the test, it is $265. And if you do fail the test, you can take it as many times as you'd like. You do have to wait 30 days in order to take the test. So that is pretty much it. That was my experience taking the MLEX test. Overall, I am very relieved. I feel like now, you know, I have so much more time. Like, I don't have to study for a test anymore. And it just feels great to pass it because now, like, I'm not just bound to working in California. I can work anywhere in the U.S. And yeah, very happy about that. So if you have any MLEX questions, go ahead and comment down below. I love you guys so much and I will see you guys soon. Bye.